Hi, I'm Kastutis and in this video, I'll show you how to make a photography website. Let's get started. You might be thinking, I already upload my best works to Instagram and Flickr. Do I really need a photography website? Well, those platforms are great for strengthening your online presence but you have limited control over them and can't monetize your content there. On the other hand, a website can help build your credibility as a professional and attract a much bigger audience. It also provides a convenient way for your customers to check all the necessary information about your services. On top of that, you can make money from your website. Sounds great, right? In this video, we will use WordPress as our website platform. It's free, highly customizable, SEO friendly, secure, and has a huge community to help you. Okay, so without further ado, let's build a photography website. First, you'll need to find a reliable and secure hosting provider. Then choose a hosting plan that suits your needs. Since we're going to use WordPress, I recommend WordPress hosting, since it provides features specifically designed for WordPress websites. Okay, so now let's choose a plan. I recommend the WordPress starter plan because it's a versatile option. It works for those who have just started their photography business and those who already have a sizable audience. It comes with a free domain, 100 gigabytes of SSD storage and unlimited bandwidth, which means it can handle high traffic. If you have an established photography business or a big audience, you can choose the business WordPress or WordPress Pro plan so that you can give the best experience for your site visitors. After clicking select, we choose the subscription period. I'm going with 12 months. Next, enter your email address or simply use your Facebook or Google account. Then scroll down to select your preferred payment method. And don't forget to apply the coupon code HA10 to get a 10% discount. Now that we bought a hosting plan, we can claim our free domain. A domain name is the address people enter in the URL bar when they visit your website. Think of a short and clear name and avoid using hyphens or other symbols so visitors won't misspell it. After deciding on a domain name, let's log into our hosting account. On the HPanel dashboard, you'll see the claim domain button. Enter your domain name in this field and select a top level domain from the drop down menu. Click Claim Domain and you should see a notification that your free domain was claimed. Perfect, let's proceed by clicking the Start Registration button. Here you will need to provide your personal information such as your country, whether it's a personal or an organizational website and your contact details. Click Finish Registration when you're done and click Continue. To complete the process, you'll need to verify your email address. I have verified my email, so we can start setting up our website by going to the hosting menu, clicking setup and start now. Then provide the password to access your WordPress dashboard in the future. Done, so I'll click continue. Next, we'll choose a layout template for the site. Since we'll use a different theme later, you can select any of them. I'm going to pick this one. On the left, you'll see the choose a domain option with the domain you just registered. Let's select that. OK, now you'll see an important message about your hosting account and website. You can read it while you wait for the setup to complete. By the way, at Hostinger, if you're using a new domain name, your SSL certificate will be installed automatically during the onboarding process. OK, so now it's time to adjust some of the website settings. To do so, you have to access your WordPress dashboard. Type the site's URL and add forward slash wp-admin at the end of it. To log in, enter the email address and password that you set on HPanel. There you go, you've arrived in your WordPress dashboard. Feel free to explore each menu and feature to familiarize yourself with the platform. But for now, let's go to the users menu and choose profile. Here, you'll see the option Display Name Publicly As, which is the name that visitors will see as the website's author. By default, it will be set to your username. We can change the username, but we can enter a different option in the nickname field. Click the drop down menu and you'll see the nickname is there as one of the options. So choose it. You can also change your profile picture here. Click Update Profile to save the changes. 
Next, let's navigate to the settings menu and select general. Here you can specify your site title, tagline, time zone and the date and time format. Once you're done, hit the save changes button. Now, still under the settings menu, head to permalinks. Choose post name so that the permalinks of your posts will feature keywords from the post name, which is good for search engine optimization. If your permalinks are set to plain, they will look like this, which is not good. They're unreadable for humans and not helpful for SEO. Click save changes when you're done. So that's what we need to set up for now. Of course, you can customize other settings later as you go. Here comes the fun part. It's time to customize our WordPress photography website. First, let's choose a theme. There are plenty of great photography themes to choose from. I will use Astra because it's fast, lightweight and compatible with many popular page builders. Let's install it. From your WordPress dashboard, navigate to the appearance menu and choose themes. You'll see a display of default WordPress themes. Click the add new theme box. Enter Astra in the search field and when you find it, click install. Once it's completed, click activate. Once the theme is active, navigate to appearance and click on Astra options. From there, install the importer plugin by clicking here. You'll be directed to the starter page. Click on build your website now. Astra then will ask you to select a page builder. I'll choose Elementor since it has around 40 templates available for free and its drag and drop interface is very easy to use. It'll definitely speed up our website creation process. As you can see, there are plenty of template categories to choose from. You'll find photography under the professionals category. You can also directly search your keyword in the search bar, but it's also nice to browse other available options. There are some templates which are labeled as premium, which you can choose if you want more advanced options. But Elementor's free version is already packed with all the necessary web building tools a beginner might need. So let's stick with it for now. When choosing a theme or template for a photography website, you need to consider whether the layout will highlight your work. I recommend selecting a theme with a clean layout, considerable space between elements, and of course, sufficient room for your photos. You can always customize it to suit your needs, but starting with a good template will help ease the process. Ok, so I will use the Love Nature template for our photography website. In the left panel, you'll see that Elementor asks you to upload your logo. If you don't have it yet, no need to worry, as you can upload it later. Just click skip and continue. Colors and fonts can also be updated later, so for now I will just go with the default options and click continue. Ok, now you'll need to provide your first name, work email, level of expertise and who you are creating this website for. Also, in the advanced options, we can uncheck the ones we don't want to apply. I'll go with the default ones. So let's proceed by clicking the submit and build my website button. Wait a few seconds and there you have it. We only need to click this button to view our website. At the moment, the website is full of demo content, which brings us to our next step, creating the essential pages of our photography website. As a photographer, there are several pages you need on your website. The main one being the home page, as it's the first page that visitors will see. It should work as an introduction to your photography business. The about page, it's where you'll tell a bit about yourself or your company. It's a great place to share what type of photographer you are, such as a wedding photographer, wildlife photographer, and so on. The portfolio page is where you'll show off your best works to showcase your skills and attract potential customers. Then a pricing or services page, listing everything you offer. And last but not least is the contact page. Creating a photography website is a great way to get leads and new business opportunities. So this is a must. Ok, so now let's build these pages, starting from the home page. In WordPress, the default home page shows your blog posts. But for our photography website, we'll create a customized home page containing the most important info about our business. Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. Navigate to settings, then select reading. There you'll see the your homepage displays option. Choose a static page. 
Then let's set the home page to home and post page to blog. This is done so if you start a content marketing strategy, you can direct the audience to your blog. Click save changes. Now let's go to pages and select all pages. Go to home and click edit. Before getting into the Elementor editor, click the settings icon and expand the template section. The drop down menu is currently set at default template. Change it to Elementor full width and click update to apply the change. Now let's proceed by clicking edit with Elementor. We are now inside the Elementor page builder. The left panel is where we add elements to our pages, such as a heading, an image or a button. Simply drag and drop them to any spot you want and start customizing it right away. If you click any of the existing elements on the page, for example this line of text here, you'll see its content in the left panel. You can edit the text colors, typography or alignment. To navigate back to the main widget panel, click the cube icon. You'll also see a floating navigator panel. You can let it float or drag it to the right side like this and it will stick there. Ok, before we proceed, let me show you the three fundamental terms in Elementor. Section, Column and Element. I'm going to hover over the edge of the page. See that blue border around the banner area and these three blue buttons? This area is called a section. If we scroll down, we'll see another section. And here is section 3. A section is the outermost area within a page. If you want to add, edit or delete a section, here are the buttons to do so. Inside each section you can add columns. And this one, it looks that there's just one column here, but it's actually three of them. See? Column 1, Column 2, Column 3. If you want to add a column, go to the navigator at the right panel and expand the section where you want to add a column. Right click it and choose Add New Column. Lastly, we can add multiple elements or widgets to each column. The options are available on the left panel. Ok, so now that you know what sections, columns and elements are, let's continue to building the page. Since we are using a template, we don't have to build the site from scratch. What we need to do is tweak this template to suit our brand and add our content. Let's start with the banner section. Click the edit section icon and you'll see its options on the left panel. Then, since we're going to make this website responsive, it's best to use a relative unit to specify the sizes of elements. Let's change the height option to min height. Then for the minimum height select VH, which means viewport height. This will create full height elements that will fill up the entire viewport's height. Slide it all the way right to 100. See, now this section covers 100% of the viewport. To change the background image, navigate to the style tab. Let's say we're going to create a food photography website. Hover over here, click choose image, upload files and select files. I'm going to choose a horizontal food picture to fit the provided space. For this tutorial, I'm using stock photos from Unsplash. Click insert media and here it is. You can adjust the image's position to your liking. Generally, the default setup is already great as it is. I'll keep the position as center center because it puts the focus on the center of the image, just like I want it to be. For the attachment, I'll keep it as scroll and I also don't want the background to repeat, so I'll choose no repeat. If you do select it, the image will be repeated either horizontally or vertically. Then for the size, I'll use cover, so my image will be scaled to fit the width of the screen, following its original proportions. If you want the text to pop a bit more, you can darken the background image by using background overlay. Expand the background overlay option, click the color picker and choose your preferred color. I'll go with black. Then slide the opacity control to darken or lighten it up. Now let's move to the text. Let's say our business name is photography. There are three rows here. On the first line I add the greeting message. On the line below the business name and finally our tagline. I will also add my location here so potential customers can see if we work on their location. To adjust the title size click the text and navigate to the style tab. Click the pen icon in the typography section.
From here you can adjust its size, change the font and adjust the spacing. Now we can right click the CTA and choose edit button. I will change the text to contact us and make the corners rounded by increasing the border radius. In the style tab you can also customize the button color, text color, add borders, shadows, adjust the padding and more. It's also possible to give a hover effect to your button. Simply click the hover option and customize the button as you like. We'll direct this button to the contact page once we create it later in this video. But now I think we need one more CTA button to tell visitors to check our gallery. People are very busy nowadays, so provide easy access to your photos the moment they arrive at the site. To do that, click the cube icon in the panel, then drag and drop the intersection element right under the existing CTA. It has two columns. Now drag and drop the button element to each column. Then set the alignment like this so that they can sit side by side in the middle. Now we go back to the first button, right click on it and choose copy. Go to the new button, right click on it, then select paste style. There you go, you don't have to customize the button from zero. Now do the same thing with the other button. Great! Now we can delete the original button. Right click on the column where it's in, then click delete. Perfect! Now we have two buttons in place. Let's edit the text. One directs our visitors to the contact page and the other to the gallery. So banner section checked. The good news is that you don't have to customize other pages banner from scratch. You can simply save this setup as a template. All you have to do is right click the banner's edit section icon and select save as template. Give it a name. I'll name it homepage banner, then click save. Now it's saved in your Elementor library and you can insert it into other pages. Let's scroll down and continue with the next section. Here we have the service section, but first I want to show the visitors a glimpse of our portfolio. So let's create a new section for that. Hover over the border between these two sections and click add section button. Click the plus icon and choose a structure. I will choose this one. Then let's add a heading and a divider. Just like what we have in the R services section. Drag and drop these two elements to the page. To keep our design consistent, we can use a heading style similar to the services section. Right click the services section, choose copy, then go back to our new heading area, right click and select paste style. All you need to do is rename the section. Now copy the section divider, go to the new divider area, paste style and you'll have the same one there. Now it's time to add our photos. Elementor comes with a gallery widget. But the free version we are using only has a basic gallery with limited features. I want to add filters to the gallery, so we need to add a plugin. Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard and navigate to plugins, and then add new. Search for essential add-ons for Elementor. Now we'll install it and activate it. Let's choose the basic setup and click next. In the next window, you can enable any of the plugins elements. You can change it anytime. But let's take a quick look at what we have here. It has the filterable gallery element that I want to add to our photography site. There's also a pricing table and let's enable WP Forms to create a contact form later. Scroll down and click next. Let's skip this for now and we're all set. Now go back to the Elementor dashboard. You may need to refresh it to access the new plugin features. Don't forget to save your work first by clicking update. Search for gallery in the elements list. Drag and drop it to the gallery section, right below the divider. Now let's customize it. There are 6 dummy images there by default. Let's change the number to 9 because I want to organize the gallery in 3 columns. Now since I have 3 columns, I'm creating 3 categories. Advertising, recipes and lifestyle. Go to the filterable controls and click it to expand the options. It has a default category, the gallery item. Let's rename it to advertising. Then we click add item and rename the other two. Now let's move to the gallery items option. Expand it and there will be 6 items there, all dummy images. Let's delete them but keep this last one. Click on the remaining dummy image. 
Under the control name field, input the image category. Now, if you hover over the dummy image, you'll see that it has an image name, a short description and two buttons. One for showing the light box and one for the gallery link. I want to get rid of the gallery link button and keep the rest. So I will scroll down and disable the gallery link button. Then on this image thumbnail above the button options, click choose image. Select or upload an image and click insert media. Scroll back up to change the image name. Then we can also add a brief image description. Now hover over the image to see the changes. Let's test the lightbox button as well. Awesome, it works. We can continue working on our gallery by clicking the add item button. Ok, now our photos are in the gallery, sorted into their categories. Notice that even though we uploaded images with various orientations, all of them are displayed as square images. If you want them to appear in their original orientation, you can change the grid style to masonry. Here's how it looks like if we change it into masonry style. I actually like that, so I think I'll keep it this way. And to make it easier for people to see more of our food photos, let's add a button at the bottom of the section that will take them to the gallery page. Scroll up to the CTA button on our banner, right click and copy the style. Then back to our new button, paste the style. Change the text to see more and set the alignment to center. Great, we'll come back to link the page later. Lastly, let's add some padding to the top and bottom of this section. Head to the navigator panel, right click on the Our Work section, then click Edit section. Go to the Advanced tab. In Padding, click the Link Values Together button to unlink it. Then set the top and bottom padding to 100. See, it now has the same space from the edge of the section to the nearest element. I'm going to save this section as a template as well, so we can use it later in our portfolio page. Now let's move on to the next section on our homepage, which is Services. The template has three images with titles and descriptions. We can use them to explain our different food photography services. But notice that the background of our works and our services sections are the same color, so it doesn't look like two separate sections. Let's change the background color of the Our Services section. If you already have your own color of choice, use that. But I'm going to scroll down and see this section, I'm not going to use it. It does have a great background color that suits our site's overall design. So before deleting it, let's copy the color and apply it to the services section. Right click anywhere inside the section but outside the columns. Copy, then go back to the services section, right click on any area inside the section but outside the columns and paste style. Now that it has the color we want, we can delete the unused section by clicking the delete section icon. Next, let's change these three images into images that represent the services that we offer. Simply click the pen icon on the top right corner of each image, then go to the left panel and click choose image to change it. Since these three available spaces are in portrait orientation, make sure to choose your images accordingly. For the service titles and descriptions, you can directly edit them in the available text boxes. Later, we'll link them to the pricing page. Now scroll down again and let's delete this section, as we'll have a dedicated About Us page. The main intent of our homepage is to get people to see some of our works, what our services are and how to contact us. So let's focus on that to avoid overwhelming the visitors. Now we arrived at the last section of our homepage, the contact section. Our intent here is to direct people to our contact page where there's a contact form. Let's change the background to a food image, you know the drill. Click the edit section icon, go to the style tab and change the image. Since the layout places the text in the middle of the section, I'll choose a picture with sufficient empty space there. It fits perfectly. Now let's change the text to reflect our brand. Click on it and the left panel will display the text editor. Lastly, apply the same button style to this CTA. And that's it! You can click the eye icon at the bottom of the left panel to preview the changes. Then click update to save the latest ones. We'll come back later for page linking and managing the navigation menu. But for now, let's take care of the other pages. Next is the about page. 
Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard, select Pages, then All Pages. We already have an About page here, so we can click Edit with Elementor. Click the gear icon to access the settings. Like what we've done with the home page, change the page layout to Elementor Full Width. Now let's customize it. To save time, we can use the banner template from our home page. Delete the existing banner by clicking the Delete Section icon. Now click Add Section, and you'll see these options. Click on the folder icon to open the template library. Here's the home page banner template. There you go! We only need one heading, so let's delete the others, and change the text to About Us. Delete the CTA buttons as well. Next, let's change the banner image to another food image. Click the Edit section icon, go to the Style tab, and choose an image. Right under the page banner, we got a block with a bigger text. It's a great spot to put a brief statement about your business, or what type of photographer you are. Here, you can add your own or your team's photo. Below it, you can talk about yourself, but focus on what you can provide for your clients. Explain how your photography service can be the solution they're searching for. And then this section right here. You can reach out to existing customers, ask for their testimonials, and put them here. If your business is just getting started, you can always add it later. And to make it easier to do that, save this section layout as a template. Close the library window. Since we don't have any client testimonials yet, I'm deleting the section for now. The next page is the portfolio. Here we should only show our best works. Do not put all of your creations, because visitors won't have the time to view all of that. Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. Click Pages and see if we already have a gallery page. Turns out we don't, so let's just create one. Click Add New and give the page a title. On the right panel, under Template, set it to Elementor Full Width and click Publish to apply the changes. Now let's start customizing it by clicking the Edit with Elementor button. I'm going to use the templates I created before, but you can also use Elementor's page template. See what they look like in the Pages tab in the Elementor library. There are many options, you just have to create a free Elementor account to use them. Ok, so let's insert our banner template and customize it. Now the filterable gallery template. Awesome, but instead of just filters, let's add the search bar here. Click the Edit Filterable Gallery icon, then change the layout option from Overlay to Search and Filter. See, it now has a search bar, where visitors can directly look for images relevant to specific keywords. If they want to filter images based on categories, they can click the drop down and choose a category. And remember, we have a See More button at the bottom of the gallery. Let's remove that and replace it with a Load More button. This is because we don't want our visitors to get directed to another page. We just want them to access more of our works. Still in the Edit Filterable Gallery panel, scroll down and expand the Load More button option. Toggle to enable it and that's it. You can also customize the message that the visitors will see when all images are loaded. Up next is the Services and Pricing page. Elementor already created one for us, so let's dive right in. Don't forget to always go first to the settings and change the page layout to Elementor Full Width. Again, I will delete the existing banner, then use our own template banner and customize it from there. Keep the buttons for now, as we will use them shortly. Now, let's move into the content of the Services page. As you can see, it has three sections for three types of service. So, we can now change the images to represent them. I will just use the same pictures from the home page. Then the titles. For the paragraph here, provide a more elaborate explanation than what we have on the home page. Explain to potential clients what each service includes. For example, suppose you're a wedding photographer. You may want to say that a session lasts for a certain number of hours and the couple will get a free album and a dozen printed photos. Or if you are a food photographer, you may want to talk about the commercial use license agreement. For the pricing, there are three options to deliver this information. The first one is to display the starting from rate. It tells visitors how much your most basic service costs. If they want to know more, they can contact you. 
The second is to show the complete pricing list. This might be practical for visitors, but you might lose the chance to get in touch with them and collect their email addresses. The last option is to not show the prices at all. This will create an opportunity for you to provide a rate that works for both you and your customers. But they might simply move away from your site, as they might be reluctant to contact you just to ask for a price. Each has its own pros and cons, so pick the one that suits you best. Now customize the style of the Start a Project button by copying our banner CTA button style and pasting it here. Great, now they are aligned with the site's overall design. Delete the banner CTA buttons once you're done. Scroll down again and you'll see another section here. You can use it to highlight what makes your business unique or modify it to contain the terms and conditions. The last page we're going to add is the contact page. We also already have a pre-made one here, so let's go ahead and customize it. So we'll change the layout to Elementor full width, delete the banner section, insert our banner template and adapt it to suit our site design. Scroll down and you'll see the Find Us section. You can add your email address, phone number, business location and links to your social media profiles. To add or edit the links, click Edit Social Icons, expand the account you want to edit, then paste it in the link field. To make it even easier for potential customers to reach out to you, provide a contact form on this page. To do that, I recommend using the WP Forms plugin. Once you have installed and activated it, access it from your WordPress dashboard by clicking WP Forms. Select Add New. Enter a name in the Name Your Form field, then choose the simple contact form template by clicking Use Template. You'll see what your form will look like on the visitor's end. You can add or delete fields and also manage whether they are required or not via the Field Options tab. I recommend keeping your form short and simple. If visitors have to fill out a long form just to ask for a price, they will likely just go away from your site because it's too much hassle. Now go to the Settings menu. From the general options, you can customize the submit button text and even the processing text. From the notifications options, you can set up the email address that will be the destination for the contact form messages. Then the confirmations option is where you can set up the confirmation message that your visitors will receive after they submit a form. Click save once you're done with the form. Now go back to Elementor. Currently, we have a shortcode element in the area that should be for the contact form, so let's delete that first. Then search for WP Forms element in the left panel. There are two options, Elementors and the one that comes with the Essential Add-ons plugin. Pick either of them and drag and drop it here. You won't see anything at first because you need to select the form. So click the Select Form drop-down and select the form we just created. Its title is also displayed there, so let's get rid of it by toggling it off. Great, your form is all set up now. As you see, we have an extra section here. You can fill it with your team members' photos, or you can also delete it and replace it with more relevant info. Okay, so that's all for the contact page. Now that we have all the necessary pages for our photography website, let's take care of the page linking and navigation menu. Back in the WordPress dashboard, navigate to Appearance and Customize. Then expand the header builder. First, let's change the logo. Click on Site Title and Logo, then select Change Logo to replace it with yours. Make sure to use a transparent PNG file. Let's delete this phone number button by clicking the X icon here. Then expand the Primary menu option to configure the navigation menu. Currently, we have four menu items on display, but we need to add one more, which is our gallery page. Click Add Items and you'll see a list of existing pages. Click the plus icon next to the See Our Works page. Now click on See Our Works. I'm going to rename it because it's too long for the navigation menu. Enter the new name in the navigation label and reorganize the menu so that the gallery sits between About and Services. It suits the logic of the customer's journey better. Visitors will probably want to see the photographs before contacting the photographer. Right? Scroll down to the footer and you'll see that the navigational menu in the footer also reflects the header. Click Publish. Great, the navigation menus all set up. Now let's open the homepage and link our two CTA buttons to the corresponding pages. 
click the edit button icon here and paste the link to the contact page in the link field. Get the link by opening your site in the new tab, right clicking the about menu and selecting copy link address. Do the same thing to the see gallery button, but link it to the gallery page. Then scroll down and link the see more button to the gallery page as well. For the services section, let's link each image to our services page. The process is the same. Just click edit image, then in the link option select custom URL and paste the services page URL there. Same for the let's talk button, let's link it to the contact page. Check all the other pages and link the existing buttons to the corresponding pages. And that's all, you've just finished creating your photography website. Do a final walkthrough to check if all the buttons and links work as they should. Also, test the contact form to see if both the sender and you as the website owner receive the intended messages. Note that Elementor provides a way to fine-tune your site's mobile versions. Simply click the responsive mode icon next to the update button and you can choose to adjust it for tablet or mobile phone. Let's try the mobile option. Do you see how the banner's heading looks too big here? Let's decrease its size. Go to the Style tab, expand the typography options, then decrease the font size. Adjust the margin and padding to provide sufficient space between the headings and the text block. Change the button alignment to center so that they don't look all over the place. Click Update to save the changes. They will only be applied to the mobile version. The desktop and tablet versions will remain the same. And that's how you create a WordPress photography website. There are still a lot more customization options that both WordPress and Elementor offer, so feel free to explore them after this. Also, don't hesitate to leave a comment below if you have any questions or you want to share your experience in creating a photography website using WordPress and Elementor. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe to Hosting Your Academy for more videos about website development. Good luck on your online journey!